All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all glory and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all you sincere the true believers. Right, today's lesson, the title is uh, Holding Fast to the Faithful Word, right? Because um, I know brothers have been, you know, touching on it lately. And uh, I believe myself as well. But, uh, you know, on persecution, that persecution is definitely coming. And we understand that because that's biblical prophecy, right? And not, not one of these prophecies are going to fail. And I also understand that, you know, it's like a lot of new new believers in the faith. And I remember how I was when I first, first came in, you know what I'm saying, hearing about some of the things. And like even the prophet Ezra, when he heard about some of the things, he was just like, whoa, what was me? But ultimately, we hear about the different persecutions that's coming and the tribulation and Jacob's trouble and all of these different things, you know, but um, even with that. And then even also the time of um, with the mark of the beast, we understand that that's the hour of great temptation as well. So in these particular times coming up, especially now in these times, hey, listen, the true, the sincere hearted true believers are going to have to show a great deal of faith by trusting in the Heavenly Father, even if things, you know, in the world, carnally speaking, are going like haywire. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, seeing things that we never seen before. So you're going to have to trust in the Heavenly Father and show a great deal of faith. And, you know, I just wanted to go through a couple of notable examples of, uh, you know, men and women that went through, uh, you know, that had that show great integrity, show, show great faith, and, and, and in spite of adversity, damn near their life, hey, they stood, they stood tall for the heavenly Father, and why y'all was shy, man, and that's that's how a sincere hearted true believer is supposed to operate, man, being in that spirit, man, holding fast to the faithful word, man, as we've been taught, man. So what does that mean? Are you holding on? You clutching after that, man? Are you not letting it go? So I have right here. This is one of my favorite uh, favorite encounters, man. Like favorite favorite uh, parts of history. About one of our elders, man, Eleazar. So let me go ahead and grab it. Second Maccabees chapter six and verse eighteen. It says Eleazar. This was the time of the Greeks under the uh, uh, this is um, I believe the Herodian dynasty, which is like uh, the time of Judas, Judas Maccabeus and his brothers, and they were revolting against the Greek uh, the Grecian Empire, right? And you know our people were being conquered, but you know that's the that, you know that goes into you know. Uh, you know, Hanukkah and the rededication of the altar. You know, if you want to learn more about those particular things, you know, read the book of uh, First First Maccabees, Second Maccabees. But in this particular time, we were being ruled by the Greeks, right? And they were profaning the altar, you know, destroying the altar, all of these different things, man, trying to get us to eat abominable foods, leave off from our heritage, you know, uh, uh, so many, you know, so many wicked things, right? But this is one of the things that they tried to do with one of our elders, right? And this is the same tactic that Esau implements now today. Right, and you're gonna see Second Maccabees chapter six and verse eighteen. Eleazar, one of the principal scribes and aged men, so he was an honorable man. Right, he was one of our elders, somebody that somebody looked, uh, uh, somebody that our people looked up to, and a well favored countenance was constrained to uh, to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. So, <clears throat> what these Grecians try to do, they try to make him open up his mouth to eat swine's flesh, so that way, what he can show that everybody to everybody else who was under him. Who looked up to him as like a, a elder or you know what I'm saying or, or, or head or different things like that. Oh shit, he did it. I'm gonna do it too. You know what I'm saying? So reading on it says, but he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth, and came of his own accord to the torment, right? I'm, I'm gonna read down. Verse 21, it says, But they that were that had charge of the wicked feast of the Grecians, what did they what did they try to do? All right, all right well, listen, Eliezer, all right, chill out, chill out, chill out. I know you ain't going to eat the pork, right? But this is what we're going to do for you, right? Do us a favor and we do you a favor, right? It's Esau, right? It says, for the old acquaintance that they had with the man, right? Taking him aside, brought him a slack and besought him to bring flesh of his own provision. So saying, listen, you ain't got to eat the swine. Just make everybody think you eating swine and we'd be good. You see what I'm saying? They do the same thing with uh, 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 LeBron and them and all of them people on, on the commercials and different things like that. You ain't got to teach your kids this. You ain't got to have your kids listen to this type of music. But feed it to everybody else, man. Make them think it's cool, right? And then you could you could, you could live fat. You'd be good. Cardi B, what she say? She said, you know, she, she don't even let her daughter listen to her music. But she feed it to everybody else's daughters. You understand? So this is, this is how you know it's the same devil, right? But continuing on, right? It says, such as was lawful, right? Such as was lawful for him to use. And to make as if he did eat the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king, which was the swine. That in doing so, he might be delivered from death. So he would be delivered from death. He, he wouldn't have had to got put to death. And, and, and for the old friendship with, the, with, with them, find favor. But he began to consider discreetly as become his age and the excellency of his ancient years. And the honorable of his gray head, weren't to, weren't to he was come. 
in his most, and it's like in his most honest education from a child. So he thinking about, nah, man, like everything he been taught, everything that he went through growing up, all of that, man, staying faithful to the heavenly Father. It says, therefore, it's like it, it's like it, and his most honest education from a child, or rather, the holy law made and given by the heavenly Father. So he was thinking about the law. Therefore, he answered accordingly, and he willed them straight away to send him to the grave. Right, that's that. That's what you would call a G. You know, that that was honorable, man. Right, verse twenty four. He said, "For it becometh not of uh, it's like it, but for it becometh not our age," said he, "in any wise to uh, to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being four score years old and ten ninety years old, were now gone to some strange religion." So he said, "Listen, it's better for me. It's better for me to do that than to have all of these young people that's looking up to me." Think that I'm thinking I'm going off and and and, and 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 going in, you know, leaving the faith where where, where, I, where I where I was brought up in, man. Right? Understanding that what he was leaving a notable example, man. Living a life with integrity, man. Right? And this is the same thing that we gonna have to come into coming into Jacob's trouble, and then also that great hour of temptation, because ultimately a decision is gonna be present uh, presented to each and every one of us, man. Each and every one of us is gonna be presented with a with with with, with, uh, with an option, right? And that option is what save your life here. Right now, ultimately, I'm gonna get into it because regardless, the heavenly Father going to deliver us from temptation. You see what I'm saying? But the point of the matter is, you're gonna be you're gonna you're you're, you're gonna be tested. You see what I'm saying? And the heavenly Father is gonna test each and every one of us. We're gonna be presented with an option: take that chip, or 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 or, or, or hey, listen, or trust in the heavenly Father. You see what I'm saying? And you see what this man did, right? Notable example: he trusted in the heavenly Father, man. So each and every one of us are gonna be presented with the same option. Right. May not be the same exact thing eating swan, but that mark of the beast is coming, man. That's biblical prophecy. So we see that. And, and, and then ultimately persecution, all of these different things, man. So so ultimately, hey, what, 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 you know, when we read Romans, the 15th chapter, we read that what these things written in a, a four time were written for our learning. So we can learn and we can hear that. Go uh, uh, draw, draw courage from that. And be like, hey, man, he he held it. He held it down like he held it down like that. He held it down like that. I got to hold it down the same way, right? Romans chapter 15, verse 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that's the point, man. Showing you that, hey, listen, when we read scriptures, when we read scriptures like this, when, well, it's like, when we read scriptures like that, um, when we read scriptures like that, um, it's so like I, I, I just got sidetracked for a second. When we read scriptures like that, we get emboldened that what, man? When that time comes, the Heavenly Father, hey, listen, we, we, we hold fast to the faithful word which we've been taught. The Heavenly Father, he's going to be there for us, man, right? And that's why it's important to read different accounts of history just like this, man. History is very important. You can think about it like, oh, oh things that just happened in the past, you know, what bearing or what, what, uh, what, what, what effect does that have on the future? Hey, listen, man, history is very, it is very much so important. Right. Because you see how the heavenly father operates. You see how he deals. You see how he dealt and you see how he going to. Right. Because they say, you know, like it's that saying history repeats itself, man. And you see how the heavenly father, how he dealt before. You will see a lot of similitudes of history and, 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 and present day time. You see what I'm saying? And the heavenly father, he was there for us before. He's going to be for us. He going, he's going to be here for us in the present and in the future. You see, so let's read on real quick. And then I'm, I'm, I'm just trying. I don't want to make it too long. Right. But um, it says, verse 24, for it becometh not our age, said he in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being four score years old and ten, were now going to some strange religion. And so they thought, so like, and say, so like, and so they, through my hypocrisy, speaking of Eleazar, right, and desire to live a little time in a moment longer, should be deceived by me, and I get a stain to my old age and make it abominable. For, for though for though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, because that's the point, man. Hey, you might be delivered from, you know, uh, what Esau going to do to you, right? You know, by not taking a chip. But Heavenly Father got you, man. The scriptures tell you, fear not man which can kill the body, but not uh, but not able to uh, uh, destroy thy soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both thy body and soul in hell, man. Meaning not hell, talking about the spiritual, uh, spiritual place hell, but... A hellish condition, man. The Heavenly Father could bring hell upon you, man. You see what I'm saying? So rather fear the Heavenly Father, right? It says, for though the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. That's the point, man. Right? So that's the point, man. So ultimately, right? So I'm, I'm going to read on verse 27. Wherefore now manfully changing this life, I show myself a, 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 a such and one as my age require. And leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honor 
uh, and, and holy laws. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. So the point is, hey, listen, man, the heavenly father, hey, listen, he, he was pleased with that. Because now you see thousands and thousands of years later, we still reading about uh, uh, Eleazar and his great sacrifice. And you already know through the reincarnation, the heavenly father, through that mighty act, through that, through that, through that, through that uh, 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 great and notable, honorable act, the Heavenly Father definitely brought him back as a prophet. You see what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, like as a member of the 144,000. So it's the same thing with us, man. Right? We, you know, we're all going to be faced with, 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 with a type of decision like that. Where ultimately we're going to have to trust in the Heavenly Father, man. Right? And your faith has to be built up. You got to be building it up now. And how do you do that? Doing the spiritual things that, 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 uh, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that feeds your faith, that feeds your spirit. Reading, studying, praying, you know what I'm saying? Doing fast, right? Uh, 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 you know, listening to lessons, doing lessons, going out on the hobbies that has whatever, you know what I'm saying? All of these different things contribute to what? The Heavenly Father working in you because that shows the Heavenly Father that you 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 you, you, you wanna you wanna do for him, right? And we read in James the fourth chapter, I believe James four and eight or four and seven, uh either one of those, basically you draw nine to the Heavenly Father, he's gonna draw nine to you. I Meaning it's a two-way street with the Heavenly Father, man. Right? So I want to read this other notable example, right? Very beautiful chapter. It's like a very, very beautiful book. It's, it's just one um one chapter, the book of Susanna. And this is a sister, man. All right, she left a notable example as well, man. Right? For somebody who was put in an adverse situation, who stood tall for the Heavenly Father, right? Why Yahweh Shai. Uh and it's still so tall, because I believe this was the time of Daniel, but still, but still, through the spirit, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, right? Um, he stood, she stood tall for, uh, stood tall for the heavenly father while Yahweh shy. And that what, when she was presented with a, uh, adverse like situation, she was like, Hey, fuck it, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, do what you gotta do. I'm gonna trust in the heavenly father and what the heavenly father do. He came through for us. I'm gonna read that real quick because this is what, this is what the heavenly father is looking for. Right. Let's just grab this real quick. Psalms 94, Psalms 94 and verse 16. It says, and who will rise up for me against the evildoers or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Right. And that's the point, man. It says, unless the hot of one had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt inside. So that's the point, man. Ultimately, right. The heavenly father is looking for those who are going to stand up for him. You see what I'm saying? Against who? The evildoers, man. Because they have then the heavenly father show his power through you. These evildoers ain't shit to the heavenly father. He just wants to see if you're going to stand up and be faithful so that way he could work through you, man. And you could, you know, receive that, see that, that, uh, 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 that blessing, man. So let's get this real quick. Uh, history of Susanna, uh, verse 20, right? It says, behold, the garden doors are shut that no man can see. Susanna was a very, very beautiful woman, right? And it was these two elders that basically they wanted to sleep with her. They was in love with her and they wanted to sleep with her, you know, even though she had a husband, wicked niggas, right? But ultimately they said that because you understand through the law, it tells you that what? Uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. So meaning that if you had two or three people that said that you did something, and, 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 and the facts was adding up and you had enough people, hey, listen, they, you know, you would get condemned. So it was people using the law uh, 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 wickedly. You understand the law is good if a man use it lawfully, but they were using it in a wicked way. And that's Jake, man, always trying to be wise to do evil or trying to find out some different way you can finesse something. But ultimately, they can't finesse nothing because the Heavenly Father still got them guys, man. Right. Verse 20, it says, behold, the garden doors, right, for verse 20. Right. So that was the whole scenario. Right. For the most part, you can get more detail by reading it. It says, behold, the garden doors are shut that no man can see us and we are in love with thee. This one, the two elders went to Susanna. Therefore, consent unto us and lie with us. They wanted to run a train on her. You see what I'm saying? Lie with us. Right. So that's the point. And she's married. She's a married woman, man. Right. So first and foremost, those guys was off from committing adultery because you already know they was probably already doing it in their mind. You see what I'm saying? But now they, 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 they was trying to, you know, uh, 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 committing it. They was trying to commit. They was committing adultery in their mind. And then uh, uh, more than likely, and then um, also uh, bearing false witness. That's two sins worthy of death, right? It, it, it says, if thou will not, we will bear witness against thee that a young man was with thee, and therefore thou didst send away thy maids from thee. So that's why she sent her maids away so a young man could come and sleep with her. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're going to say, right? Then Susanna sighed and said, uh, and said, I am straightened on every side. She's like, damn, I'm, I'm in a fucked up situation. I'm in, I'm in a situation right here. What do, I, what do I do? You see what I'm saying? And, and, and for if I do this thing, it is death unto me. So if she do that thing which they wanted, that's death anyway. Why is that? You see what I'm saying? Because ultimately the heavenly father going to get her. And if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. Right? So either either way, she felt like she was in like a, hey man, she like shit. Right? Verse 23, 
it is better for me to fall into your hands and, and, and not do it than to sin in the sight of the heavenly father. With, the loud, with, with, uh, with that, Susanna cried with a loud voice and the two elders cried out against her. Right. So read an arm. Let's get down to verse 35. So she cried out, man. She was like, she cried out to who? The heavenly father, man. Right. It says verse 35. And she weeping looked up towards heaven for her heart trusted in the heavenly father, Yahweh. Right. And the elder said, as we walked in the garden alone, this woman came in to, uh, uh, came in with two maids and shut the garden doors and sent the maids away. Then a young man who there was hid came unto her and lay with her. Verse 42. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, oh, everlasting power. That was them bearing, bearing false witness. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, oh, everlasting power that knowest the secrets and know of all things before they be. Thou knowest that they have bear false witness against me and behold, I must die. Whereas I never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me. Right. So basically she cried unto the heavenly father. And that's what we're supposed to do because ultimately hey, she trusted in the heavenly father. So because if she ain't trusted in the heavenly father, it would have showed through her action by what giving into those men. Right. And now she, she, that, that showed that she, she, she applied fear, not him, which can kill the body, but rather fear him, which can destroy both that body. And, uh, and so, cause she would have preserved her life a little longer, but the heavenly father would have still got her because not only would those guys have been off, but she would have been accompanied in it. You see what I'm saying? Because she gave into them. Not only that would have been adultery because she was married. Right. But this shows that what she trusted in the heavenly father, man, it was a beautiful thing. Right. And then left a notable example for, you know, for all the you know, other young sisters or not even just sisters, brothers. We take this too. We like, damn, she was thorough. You know what I'm saying? Because these are two guys that was trying to like two elder guys that was trying to get at her, man. Like, it's like, man. Right. Nahum 1 and 7, it says, how the one Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he know of them that trust him. And that's the point, man. Right. So the heavenly father, he's a stronghold unto us, man. And, and, and the heavenly father was indeed a stronghold unto Susanna in that time, man. Right. The heavenly father protected her, man. Right. And ultimately what, man? Let's get this in real quick. So I racked 30 because that was that was temptation for her. Right. But what did the heavenly father do? So I read 33 and 1, there shall no evil happen unto him that fear of how to won, but in temptation, even again, he will deliver them. So she got delivered, man. And that was that was a, tempt, a temptation of what? To go off enticement to sin. That's what temptation means, right? So verse 61, it says, and they arose against the two elders, for Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. Because what Daniel did was he separated the witnesses. The same thing that Esau, like Esau, that's, that's show you that Esau be biting off of us anyway. But what he did was, okay. So you, so y'all both saying that, that, that this woman did something, right? Okay, cool. All right. Let's examine. Let's examine the matter. Send him over there. Send him over there, right? And and, and, and I'm going to ask this man, where was you at when you saw it? And I'm going to ask this man, where was you at when you saw it? They said two different locations. So that's how you know that it was fraud. And that was that was the heavenly father putting the spirit on, 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 on the prophet Daniel as a young man, right? To, to, to go ahead and, and figure out the matter, man. Judge the matter. You see what I'm saying? And then what resulted in what? That woman being delivered. So let's read on. It says, and they arose against the two elders for Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. And according to the law of Moses, they did unto them in such sort as they maliciously intended to do to their neighbor. And they put them to death. Thus, the innocent blood was saved the same day. Right. And that's the point, man. So when he, when you bear false witness uh, uh, on somebody for committing uh, 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 a sin, you're supposed to receive the, the, the penalty that they were supposed to receive. And what's the penalties of what? Adultery, right? Death, man. So they received death. And then it also, they was also worthy of death just by committing false uh, false witness, man. But just to go into it, to bring it all full circle, the point of the matter is, right, these times of persecution are coming, man, right? And there's times uh, uh, that each and every one of us are, are we're going to be presented with an option, an option that ultimately we're going to have to stick with the Heavenly Father, man. You see what I'm saying? Plain, plain and simple. And, and this is why we continue to keep working and, 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 and being on point for the Heavenly Father as best as we can. Right. Because ultimately right here, it says. Revelation three and eleven, it says three and ten, because thou kept the word. And so that's the point. The scripture was what? Hold fast the faithful word. Right. Speaking of, Tim, I believe that's Timothy. It's like a Titus, Titus one and nine or something like that. Titus. Um, Make sure I got it right. Titus. I don't want to just say the wrong scripture. It was tight. Yeah, Titus 1 and 9. All right. Holding fast the faithful word. Right. But this is the point right here. Re Revelation uh, uh, Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Right. Because you hold, hold, held fast to that word. It says, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So we see these notable examples 
uh, 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 brothers, you know, uh, uh, men and women that what? That stood faithful for the Heavenly Father despite despite all of that, man, despite anything. Another notable, and there's plenty of them. You had Joseph when he was uh, when he was uh, accused of what rape. He could have went laid with the Egyptian woman and, and 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 shit like you know to like and wouldn't have went to jail. But ultimately, the heavenly father would have been against him. You see what I'm saying? So many different scenarios where the prophets was putting like you know or, or sincere artists who believers was putting the adverse situations. But ultimately, at the end of it, it's gonna be all good, man. Heavenly Father gonna deliver us, man. Right, so you know, I don't want to write this out. This lesson edified, exhorted, and comforted someone. Um, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and Shalom to all you sincere, the true believers, man. Keep fighting, keep pushing, man. Shalom.